Hello there and welcome to our reflections for Wednesday the 2nd of September. One of the great things that I found in life about having moved further north gradually uh, through my life, or mostly having moved further north, uh, up through England, having grown up in South End, uh, and then at some point moving to Hastings and then gradually moving north from there, is that I've moved further away from the M25. Now I know the M25 gets a lot of stick, uh, but to be fair, a lot of it is reasonable. Um, in his most amusing book, uh, Grappling with God on the M25, Frank Topping, uh, in his first chapter, does talk a lot about um, life on the M25 or life on motorways in uh, Britain um, and how much time they take and the attitude that we might take towards driving on some of these um, roads. Why am I talking about this? Well because it's bank holiday weekend or we've just come out of the bank holiday weekend. Some of you may still be on holiday uh, and I want to think to think a little bit about how we travel on these roads and our attitude to it and how maybe we can make better use of that time. So I want to read to you just a little bit of, of Frank's amusing reflections about the time he and June spent on the M25 on one particular occasion. He writes this, We joined the M25 at Seven Oaks, settled down in the slow lane. I suppose we have a kind of philosophy now about motorway driving. Having driven close to a quarter of a million miles in the last several years, taking our plays on to various places, inevitably you develop a survival philosophy. Our philosophy is based on the observation that in the United Kingdom, roads seem to have their own speed. If you drive for a period of two or three hours, up, down or across almost any stretch of the British road system, it doesn't much matter if you drive fast and neurot neurotically or as calmly and as moderately as you can. The difference in time at the end is hardly worth the effort expended. There will, however, be a big difference in how you feel. If you drive very fast, you will inevitably arrive at your destination tense, muscles aching, close to exhaustion and feeling you've done a hard day's work. If, on the other hand, you choose the slow lane and drive at about 60, having conversations, listening to the radio and eating the occasional apple, you don't feel so tense or so wound up and you don't arrive at that much, all that much later than your fast driving counterpart. There's a lot to be said for that. I remember uh, being told that on a speed awareness course. Ooh, it's a confession. Um, but it's true, it was proved that actually driving those 10 miles an hour faster and trying to nip in and out of traffic doesn't actually save you a huge amount of time in the end uh, over, uh, over a reasonable distance. Um, so why, why stress ourselves? with all that effort. Why not relax? If you want to take, go the whole hog, drive a Volvo or a Saab instead, they're even more relaxing. Uh, but Frank goes on to say, on motorways in heavy traffic we found it doesn't matter which lane you're in. You seem to keep more or less level with the same vehicles whether you're in the slow, middle or fast lane. You keep seeing that vehicle from Pocklington in Yorkshire, the one with wash me written on the dust on the back the difference is your physical and mental condition at the end of the drive. In the slow lane you feel relaxed, in the fast you don't. It's as simple as that. Now while I might disagree with Frank that actually on uh, the British road system, according to the advanced drivers, um, we don't actually have a slow lane, a, far, a medium lane and a fast lane. We have an inside lane and then overtaking lanes. So now that I've made that point, I will shut up on that fact. Um, but he goes on to say that one of the great mysteries of motorways uh, is why traffic suddenly slows down and then mo starts moving again and stops again. Uh, it could be for a whole variety of things. Roadworks, uh, where you get an advance sign indicating that you're going to come across several miles of cones. And then, of course, there being no actual sign of any work going on that several miles of cones will slow down the traffic. Uh, it could be that something happened on the other side of the motorway and people are just rubbernecking. Sometimes we never know. 
If you are travelling over the bank holiday weekend slash week, then just bear all that in mind and try and take a calmer attitude to your driving. Or do as uh, Frank and June do and enter into deep conversations. In this conversation, or in this journey they took on the M25, they spent a lot of time talking about the existence of God, which I think I mentioned um, before. So they went through discussing from uh, Anselm, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury, um, many, 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 many years ago, through to Thomas Aquinas, to Martin Luther, to John Wesley, uh, all discussing or reflecting on the existence of God. They particularly focused on uh, Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas, and his five theories about the existence of God. The irony is, of course, the first one of these theories, um, God is referred to as the prime mover, which is uh, a very ironic term when you're sat stationary on the M25, or as we used to call it when I lived down south, uh, the great big circular car park. But what about you? What do you discuss when you're on these journeys? Have you had discussions when you've been stuck in bank holiday traffic? Well, if you want to share them with me, then please do. I challenge you to have those deeper conversations if you're travelling. Um, why not, if you're bored, get one of your passengers to Google Anselm's theories or the theories of Martin Luther on the existence of God or Thomas Aquinas. Um, that will get you look at each of those five his five stages or five levels of, of the existence of God. Or, if you want something a bit more recent, Carl Jung, um, the counterpart of uh, Sigmund Freud, and look at his theories on the existence of God. Uh, you might find that a little more uh, approachable or acceptable. Um, a little less maybe academic, but I'm challenging you. Have some some brainy kind of discussions when you're on the motorway. Don't just listen to Radio 2 the whole time. It may not sound fun, but I gather you'll get something. I guarantee you'll get something out of it. Uh, think of it like a if you do jigsaw, jigsaws or, or like doing thing, crafty things on holiday, think of it like a mental or spiritual jigsaw. Um, one of the uh, difficult ways to argue about people's perceived experience or existence of God um, is if you're talking to somebody who feels they've definitely had um, a religious experience, um, because then for many the argument becomes a bit redundant. Um, and Frank Topping said it's a bit like somebody trying to, dis to discuss um, the existence of their wife. Uh, I know my wife exists because I know her. In the same way, I do not have to believe in the existence of God because I know God. In fact, that's exactly what Carl Jung himself said um, in an interview just not long before he died. He was asked if he believed in God and his reply was simply, no, I do not believe in God. I know God. Well, we all hope to reach that stage and have that relationship uh, with God, to know God. Uh, but that doesn't mean we don't need to challenge ourselves with the discussions about the existence of God. So I challenge you to have those discussions on your motorway journeys over this what's left of this holiday period. But for our Bible reading today, I want to turn to John chapter 14, the Gospel of John chapter 14, which in many ways touches on that. But also I'm going to stick in an extra verse at the end, which I sometimes like to tack on the end of this passage. Um, I'm going to read the first 14 verse, verses. Um, but I'm going to add on verse 27 because I think it says something about the difference between those attitudes to our driving um, when we're on the M25 or the M6 or the M1 or wherever you may be. So beginning at verse 1 of chapter 14 of John's Gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trouble. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. 
If it were not so, I would have told you that I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that you, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, will do greater things than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. And then verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Okay, so Frank Topping talks about maybe the best attitude to life is taking one where if you're driving on motorways, the M25, you take life in the slow lane. You don't get there much behind the guy who's going bonkers, nipping in and out of traffic, or seemingly driving hell for leather in the fast lane. But you will arrive much more peacefully and maybe more fulfilled. So have those discussions on your travels and enjoy the journey. I want to share three short blessings from uh, a book called A Book of Blessings by Ruth Burgess, published by the Wild Goose uh, Worship Group. And uh, the first one is called Lord of Every Pilgrim Heart by Peter Miller. Lord of every pilgrim heart, bless our journeys on these roads we never planned to take, but through your surprising wisdom discovered we were on. And then from the Naust, uh, one called the Pilgrim People. God be with us on our journey. Jesus, guide us in your love. Lord, gift us through each other, a Pilgrim People anew. And then finally from Kate McElhagger, a journey blessing. God be with you on the road of life suffering. Christ be with you in celebration. The Spirit be with you to encourage and bless you at all times and in all time. Amen. God bless. Travel safely.